Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gagnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, I'm Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble and it goes from now until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time and if you're somewhere else in the world, figure out when that is, okay? Uh, but it's it's live if you're hearing it, uh, well, could I, if it wasn't live, could I do that? No, it's live if it's on from 10 uh, to midnight Eastern Daylight Time. So then you look at where you are. You're in China. It's usually a 12-hour difference. I think we're on at uh, we're on at 10 o'clock in the morning over there right now. If you're in Dubai, well, we'll have to ask uh, uh, our good friend who was in Dubai uh, for that. Okay. Uh, but uh, whatever time it is where you are, uh, hopefully it's live. If it's not live, you're listening to a recording of the program. I would like to sit straight up, but my back has been killing me for days. I don't know what I have. I, it's not a kidney. You know, I've always got something wrong. It's not a kidney. I went to the physical therapist today, and I told him I had a back problem too, but he didn't do anything about that. He just went to work on my numb feet, which are still numb, by the way, and probably will continue to be. He's given me... He, here's what I hate about physical therapy. You're paying a guy. He's making... Decent money. I mean, not like a doctor would for a visit, but uh, decent money. Okay. And uh, uh, he, I, I pay him uh, through my insurance. Uh, and then he says, and now um, here are some exercises you have to do at home. And he went through them with me. And I went, I'm thinking to myself, I'm going, homework? Really? Homework? I thought I was through with that years ago. He did it last time when I had the meniscus. Here are the, here's what you got to do, you know. Uh, so I, I guess I'm going to do it. But I have to go, ibuprofen for this back. This back, it's a little, it gets spasmy. I think it's from working out, okay? I think that something I did pulled that, okay? And uh, now it's taking forever to get better. It's a little better today. I take an ibuprofen and it goes away, but then it comes back, but it's a little bit better. Um, but anyway, so enough with my medical shit. You know, it, what, what it is, what I've got wrong with me is old man stuff. I don't have uh, wrong with me, you know, stuff that so far, knock on wood, it's going to kill me. You know, it's not like, well, we've got to go in there and get that cancer before it spreads. You know, no, uh, you've got a, you've got a, you've got a, uh, 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 we've got arthritis in my spine, and that is uh, pinching a nerve. That's what the doctor saw on the uh, on the X-rays, and he says uh, we got to go send you to physical therapy for two months, and then come back and see me. And if it's not gone, we'll go to Plan Two. And I said, what's Plan Two or Plan B or whatever? And he said, uh, well. we'll figure what that is I, I, what, what that will be when the need be comes quite frankly i want an operation right now get rid of these numb feet just do an operation i'll take the chances that i'll become like patrick because he went in for a little spine surgery and before you know it look what happened you know so anyway uh, P patrick was off last night and the reason he was off he, he you know he's very good I, I, he writes me when he can't call the show now sometimes he just doesn't call the show and he never writes me about that like eh, fuck you i don't feel like doing it tonight but when he he knows he can't call the show because of something he has to do he's very nice and writes me and he writes me yesterday that he has to had to go he was having trouble with his hearing aid it wasn't working right yes in spite of all his other problems he's got hearing and so he had to go to a get it fixed at like eight o'clock the next morning. So he, he he had to go to bed. He and he writes me a note about it. He, you know, 
It's like uh, he, he feels like he's still going to school. Mom has to write him a note. Uh, please excuse little Patrick. Uh, he has to have his hearing aid fixed. Anyway, I don't have any guests tonight, so I may I may go to the phones early. Uh, I, I don't have a hell of a lot to talk about. I didn't have a lot to talk about last night. It was very strange. Uh, you know, we've had this whole thing with uh, the, uh, the, uh, the King Liar uh, lying up a storm uh, and changing his story every five minutes. I mean, how, how far does he think he can go in, in fooling people? I mean, he's so in, you know, it, it, the trouble with a lie, I said this last night, the trouble with lying is that you got to be really good at it. And being really good at it means you're consistent with the lie. In other words, if I, if I say, hey, you know, the dog ate my homework, then I've got to then continue to remember that I told you the dog ate my homework. Uh, lies are, uh, so when you lie, if you lie initially, and then you change anything in that lie, which is always very possible with a lie, then you get caught, all right? But if you're telling the truth, the truth always remains the truth. You know, hey, this is what happened. Yeah, well, that's what happened. Hey, you want to hear the story again? I'll tell you what happened. It's the same story every time when you're telling the truth. It's a different story every time when somebody's lying to you. And so we've got this president who, I don't know, he, he's a sicko, man. He's got a really, there's something wrong there. There's something quite, not quite right. He feels a compulsion to lie. And uh, it, oh, and the latest thing here is here's the best. The latest thing is he's inviting Putin to come to the United States to interrogate his Justice Department. I'm not kidding you. Yeah, that's like that's that's the first thing these guys want to do. I can't remember which one of the these guys it was. I think it was Coates, maybe. Uh, who was being interviewed by Andrea Mitchell. And in the middle of the interview, she gets the message that the president has said that he's inviting Putin to come over with his people and interrogate our Justice Department, right? And Coates went, at first when she started to read it, he went, oh, what, what now, basically? And then she read it, and he just went, Huh? Like, he wasn't even told about this, okay? And, and it's some, he's somebody who will be influenced by it. So, I mean, it's just been, uh, you know, I wish I could say that Trump is the gift that keeps on giving, but he really doesn't keep on giving. That's the problem. Hold on a second. I want to turn my uh, air conditioning up now. I turned it down because it was, uh, let me see here. Be there we go. All right, let's see if I get a little more air now. I turned it down because it was really freezing in here. And, uh, you know, and I, I, I go barefoot and with shorts. I have short, I have sh no, I don't have underpants on. These are shorts, okay? Don't want you to think I do my show naked below the waist. I can't because sometimes if I go back too far, you can see what, I, what, I, what I've got. You know, we were just doing this as an audio program. It was so much more simple, uh, so much simpler. But then again, uh, uh, you couldn't see me doze off in the middle of a discussion. Anyway, uh, let me see here. I, so I, I, I don't have anything really to, uh, 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 to, to bring to you. I mean, because it's just, you know, it's just the more, more stuff about Trump. And who gives a fucking goddamn shit about Trump? Uh, but I know what uh, what happened today. I get a call every time I see that my phone is ringing and it's Jack Bishop. I know that it's going to be something that we need to solve. Uh, and it, it, you know we've talked about him being technically challenged, and and here we are in a in a in a situation here we got Skype and we've got the encoders and we've got these thing and that thing and you know it's a little a little bit much for old Jack so every now and then he writes me and he goes ah, this isn't working like the other night he couldn't get something working he has to in order to get into my machine here to drop his shows off and things like that 
he's got to use the encoder. And to get into the encoder, he has to have a password. Okay? And passwords are always case sensitive. In other words, if the first letter is a capital, it better be a capital. And if the last thing is a, is a number or something, it should be a number, right? Well, if the rest of them are lower case, they should be lower case. Um, and he couldn't get it to work. Just couldn't get it to work. You know what turned out was wrong? He had his cap lock on. So it was typing all caps for the password. Ta-da! So anyway, that's the kind of thing I did. So today I had to deal with something, and it really wasn't his fault. Well, it was kind of his fault because he didn't know how to handle it. He got a thing from Skype. He was testing his Skype out, right? And it was a message. And I may wind up getting this message myself. Uh, but the message said, uh, you cannot continue to use Skype because we are not uh, going to be using this, this Skype thing any longer. Uh, so you have to go to the new one. So sign in here. So he did it, and it put the new Skype on his screen. Now, I went to my machine, and I kept turning my Skype on and off, on and off, trying to see if signing out, seeing if, if I was going to get that message. And so far, good luck, I haven't gotten that message. So we then had to figure out how we were going to get him back to the old Skype because we like the old Skype. It's, it's easier to use. It's better to use. And I, I know one day I'm going to have to use that new Skype. They're just going to force me to use it, and it's going to change the whole nature of the way this program looks on screen, okay? And that bothers me greatly. But anyway, he calls me, and I, as I'm going off, to the physical therapist. So now I'm trying to solve his problem. Well, anyway, I go and I, I, I have a way of getting onto his machine now. And I looked at it and I said, you've got the new one. You want to get the old one back again. And I left him. Called him when I got home. And Jack had uh, managed to get the, uh, uh, the old one. He had the old one on, uh, on his computer. So he just uh, installed that. And he's up and running and he's not having the problem now. But what gets me is fucking Skype, okay? Um, they do these things where they are forcing you to use the new Skype, the one they invented, the one that everybody, everybody hates. I've not met anyone who likes the new and current Skype, all right? Plain and simple. And yet, they're, you know, they're forcing people to upgrade to the new one. Uh, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to serve that one anymore. Well, fuck you, Microsoft. You know, if if there are some people that don't feel comfortable and don't like your old one, give us the two varieties. And they were doing that. You could go to Skype, and then there was a thing that would come down uh, in the download page and give you different things, like you could do Mac or you could do Linux. And there was one that said. Skype Classic, and what that would download would be the old version. Well, that's not there anymore, okay? They stopped doing it for a while, then they brought it back, now they're not doing it again. And they're trying to force everybody to go over to this new system, which is more social media oriented than it is anything else. So I'm afraid of going to it because it will change the look. Now, let me, let me just show you what I'm talking about. This is the screen for Skype. Okay, the, the, right now nobody's calling, so there's nothing there. And I like it because when people come on, they pop up as squares on there, and it looks really good. With the new one, they only put up like four people at a time. It's usually the people who are talking, and it really doesn't look this good. Okay, uh, it doesn't serve my purposes. So I am dreading the day that I have to go to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the new one, and um, uh, if we have to do that, we have to do that. I'll, I'll figure out some way of making it look decent. But I what I don't like is there are two fat points here. I don't like Skype forcing something on us. You know, if I don't want the newest uh, operating system for the Mac. I just don't download it. Every now and then it might say, hey, you want the new system? And you go, no, I don't, okay? 
There's nothing saying, you know, they don't force you to take the new one. I know there's still people who are using, like, you know, I, I have one machine that won't go further than back then because, like, this machine I'm using here won't be able to upload to the new one or up download the new one because the new operating system because they, they, they stop at a certain point. They make you kind of obsolete in a way. But that doesn't mean anything. The machine will still work, and I can still use it for several years. And that's not a problem. But at least I have the option of not upgrading to the latest operating system. With Microsoft and Skype, they force you to do it. You don't want to do it. You like things the way they are. And, and just tell people, well, if you don't like things, if you don't like the new version, go ahead, use the old one. But they're trying to force this version on us. And I went online and I looked at uh, people complaining about the newest Skype. Now, you would say, okay, well, you know what you should do? You should call Microsoft. You should call Skype. And you should tell them your concerns about this. Uh, you know, and if they get enough calls, they'll, uh, maybe they'll change things. I challenge anybody out there watching me right now to call Skype or to call Skype help or any form of Skype or even make a call to Microsoft. Find the number for Microsoft. It's like these companies don't want to talk to anybody anymore. And especially at Skype, because they don't want people belly aching about how bad this new system is that they work so hard on to just this, uh, recreate Skype. My, uh, you know, it's the old saying, and I'm sure you've said it, and I've said it, and a lot of people have said it, and that is, uh, why fix something if it ain't broke? All right, and it's not; it hasn't been broken. And yet they want to they wanna fix it. I uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, I know some of you people are forced now to use the new Skype. It doesn't affect us here. When you call us using Skype, which you can do, just go over to gabnet.net. Don't worry, the show's playing over there as well. Uh, and, and on the right-hand side of the page, I'll show you how to download Skype and how to, how to get onto the Citizens Panel. It even has a one-push button to get you onto the Citizen Panel. So, you know. It's not difficult, but uh, don't worry. They'll work their asses off to see how difficult they can make it, okay? That's what I hate about it. That's what I hate about technology now. These people, you, it, 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 there, usually there's never a number you can call anymore to talk to somebody. And if you have to talk to somebody, I do this business with GoDaddy, which used to be a really good company, and now it's just for shit. I dread having to call them. Here's, a, here's what happens. Here's the number to call. If you have a technical problem, press 2. Okay. Meep. Then a guy comes on, maybe, you know, after about five minutes, right? Or a woman. And they say, oh, what can we do for you here? Technical support. And then you tell them your problem, and they say, well, hold on. We have to, uh, we have to send you over to web services. And then you're online waiting for 25 minutes, okay? It's like that first call, it's like, it's like that first call is the setup. Oh, God, they answered really fast. And then he goes, okay, well, we're going to have to send you over to uh, the place where they can fix that. Oh, okay. And then you wait. for. I, one time I waited for 45 minutes. And it used to be that first call, they solved everything. But somebody at, at, at GoDaddy says, we've got a better idea on how to fuck up people's lives and make them waste their lives waiting online for tech support. So that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Hey, listen, I got something to show you. I figured uh, I was going to show this tomorrow night, but the problem is the girlfriend sits over there and then she wouldn't be able to see it because it'd be playing over here. So I'll play it tonight. Maybe I'll play it again tomorrow night when she's here to have her comment on it. But what happened was we used to keep going to Costco, and we still go to Costco, and every time we go to Costco, she does the same thing, okay? And I'm not, it'll explain itself, what that same thing is, okay? So I found as I was cleaning out all my videos on my iPhone because I got the new iPhone and I wanted to kind of 
loosen up some of the memory in there and I got rid of all the photos I didn't want and you know the ones where I shot my foot by accident or something like that or and um, I'm going through the videos and of course there are these videos of her with this particular thing she did on many occasions and that I shot with my with my uh, iPhone so I just figured I would take all of them get them out of there so I got room and then I saw that I had them all in one place, so I figured, eh, why don't I make a uh, greatest hits out of this? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the greatest hits of Girlfriend at Costco. What were you saying? I was saying it doesn't get old. What doesn't get old? <laughs> Extra large depends <laughs> for men's. Upside down. Here we go. Men's extra large. There you go. For 64 ways. <laughs> oh, did you put it in your bag? No. Next to the potato chips. <laughs> Now you got to lift it up and put it back in. Here, I'll put it back Oh, by in. the way, those are for women, I think. Oh, no, those are men. Those are men. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Pays for horses. Yeah, yeah. You know what I almost did as a joke? What? I bought, was going to buy some frozen shrimp, shrimp scampi in a box. <laughs> I killed you. She, she's making... Shrimp scampi. Uh, oh, but you, you already picked yours up. Alex got you himself the wrong size and the wrong gender. So I have to return these and get them and get the right one. Well, I'm getting out of here before you can do that. Here, oh, look, Alex, it depends on the extra large. Should I get you one? She finds this very funny every week. Here we go. And then, <laughs> then she only has to put it back in there. Oh, oh you're gonna oh you're gonna drop it in my uh, Marjorie. Marjorie. Come back here. I Marjorie. What are you doing? Are you shopping? Huh? What what I'm over here doing other things. I did, I just ran right by there. Here. Maybe you need some. Oh, no. No. Long time since you needed those. <laughs> I'll get you the Depends. I got them for you because we know how you depend on them. <laughs> They're yours right there. Huh? Exactly. You know, it's gay to the point where it's not funny anymore. <laughs> you still find that funny, don't you? <laughs> you still find that funny. <laughs> we can let these people through, please. <laughs> Once again, that's funny. My husband doesn't know how to pick out his depends. <laughs> we wears an extra large. <laughs> Small. I just want to say, I think it's awful that she's selling the entire supermarket. Costco's, not Fairway. You haven't seen him yet. Just, 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 you know. Yeah, you're still fine. And that, of course, was, uh, <laughs> oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Jeez. Well, that, 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 she found that funny every single goddamn time we went down there. So, you know. So, anyway, I thought I'd play that tonight because they needed something to fill up the time. And look, a half hour has gone by and I've wasted my life. Uh, and now it's time to waste yours as I open the lines. The lines are now officially open. Let's see who calls tonight. I know that Phil probably will be calling tonight. And I think Patrick is available tonight. And Jeff, I hope, is available tonight. And Scott is out there. I know he's out there. 
and uh, who else? I don't know. Uh, any one of a number. Ray Renati hopefully will call. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, you know, I, 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 there are a bunch of names I'm missing out on here. Uh, but uh, in fact, there's, who haven't we heard from lately? We, there's one guy we haven't heard from lately, and I keep forgetting. Uh, but he called almost every night, and then he stopped calling. So, you know, anyway. Mm. Mm. So I'm waiting for you to call. Uh, and uh, see, a lot of people, I know what a lot, of, a lot of you do. You don't listen to the first half hour. I don't want to hear the interview with Larry. I don't want to hear the, you know. Ah, uh, here he comes. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, ladies and gentlemen, fresh from making his uh, girlfriend happy yesterday. <laughs> it was her. Uh, yeah, I'm still having problems with this thing. It worked, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Tuesday night? Right after I got done with uh, your show, I tried calling it the Jack Show, and the uh, mixer worked fine. Uh, I left it on. I didn't change any settings. Uh, I did what I had to do yesterday. I came home today. Uh, I tapped on the microphone. It sounded good. I went to do a Skype uh, test call. Didn't work. So I'm back on the uh, C920. The what? The uh, camera oh, mic. The camera mic. Yeah. That's what you get. You got yourself a big, expensive uh, board there. and uh, Yeah, well... Tomorrow morning, I'm going to call for Sony yeah. and uh, uh, let them help me. And if it doesn't work, I'll send it back. It's got a 30-day guarantee. It has a 30-day guarantee. Yeah. And then I don't get mine. I see. Okay. Well, get yours after I buy a new one instead of the one from uh, 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 from eBay. Yeah. Well, they, uh, you know, it, it. the thing is that you got it to work on Jack's show? Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, and and it sounded good. <laughs> yeah, but why would it? Why uh, that? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, we're not here to solve technical problems on the air, but it just seems rather weird. It's, it's not that calling me is any different than calling him. Well, uh, that's true. So I I left it alone. I didn't turn it off. I didn't I didn't mess with it. I usually never turn it off. And uh, so uh, tonight. I tried it and it didn't work. Really? Try <laughs> it again tonight. There, there's a there's a mute button, and uh, e, e, and when I turn it on, the mute button is on, and if you're supposed to be able just to press it and it will turn off, well, I press it and it doesn't turn off. Uh, there's probably so, something somewhere else that you've hit that makes right. that mute button stay mute. Probably. So that, that's why I'm going to call uh, the support tomorrow did, morning. Did it come with an instruction manual? No, I <laughs> actually printed out the quick start guide, and uh, I've read it cover to cover. Yeah, and, and, and uh, does it say anything about the mute button? It just says where it is. See, the, su the suspicion is, to me, that it has yeah. something to do with that mute button not unmuting. And that there's, that's some, right. there's some other thing that you have switched that won't allow the mute to go off. I, th I think that's correct. So that's why tomorrow morning uh, at 7 is, no is 9 their time, and that's when their uh, 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 help desk opens. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, so they, meanwhile, you sound fine tonight. You know, yeah, you good, probably good enough. You can't overpower us with your great microphone, but, you know. No, but I, 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 I can I can play with it. <laughs> you, 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 you can live like a farmer tonight, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, and it's hot here. How hot is it? Uh, I don't know. Let me take a look. But uh, it's hot. And yeah, we're 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 at uh, what are we now? We're probably somewhere around seventy-two. Let me take a look at the temperature. It's uh, it's eighty-three right now. Right now, here in New York City, it's seventy-four degrees. But today it was 97. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Jack today because he yeah. was having all those problems, and he's in Texas. How hot do you think it was when he was talking? 107. To no, it was 104. It was 107 
uh, it, it, in that, what do you call it, in real time or real feel or whatever? Oh, uh, Faye was talking to her sister who lives in Frisco, Texas. Uh-huh. And in Frisco, it was 107. Oh, my God. They are, yeah, they're warning, those outside of Dallas. They're, they're warning people in in Texas to stay indoors, you know, to not go out. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's uh, terrible, just terrible. And, and this global warming is Trump's fault. It, well, uh, no, it's not. No? <laughs> no? It's not. no. Everybody says it is. No, what's going to be his fault is uh, not doing anything about it. You know, and saying, oh, we can pollute our rivers more and we can pollute our air more. Then he, he's contributing to it. That's the he problem. He did do something about it. Uh, for seven days, they weren't in the White House because they were replacing the air conditioning system uh, when he first uh, uh, moved into the White House. Oh, I see. Okay. And uh, that was doing something? Well, it made it cooler. <laughs> it, it made it cooler. I see. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, you, you know, I, oh, Jeff wants to say something. Yes, Jeff. If you want to cool out, come to my house. It's 64 degrees outside. Oh, really? really? It, 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 a little, little, little cooler than here. Yeah. I think it's supposed to go down into the 60s tonight. Well, which is wow. kind of nice because they get to sleep with the window open, you know, and... Uh, the thing is, though, I keep the air conditioning on in this studio all day long, which is going to cost me a fortune by the time the next bill comes. And the reason I do it, the reason I do it is because all these machines heat up the room. Yeah. And I, I don't want them to overheat. So I, you know, I mean, they, they, they probably wouldn't burn out or anything like that, but I still like to keep the room cool. Why don't you get some mini fans, some small fans? I and did. I did. That didn't help. No, it didn't help. No, not for you, but for the machines. No, the, I they did. make these really I, small I, ones. I, I did, and uh, it didn't do anything. You know, no. just took up another electrical socket. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm I I'm, I'm thinking of getting a new air conditioner in here, though. Uh, I'm thinking of going to eight B BT, eight thousand BTU and hope I don't blow a fuse. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, if you put it in and it doesn't work, yeah. you can always take it back if you get it at Costco. Yeah. Hey, uh, we're, we're being joined right now by SG, ladies and gentlemen, uh, or as we like to call them, good. Um, hello, SG. How are you? Great. Yeah, you should have some light on. We can't. We can barely see your your face. Uh, well, no, oh, that, light <laughs> that's, that's the light behind you doesn't work. Well, you know, yeah, your camera looks to the light that's behind you and it makes yeah, you dark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, he's moving around. Yeah, move facing the light. Here we go. He's, he's moving into another room. Now he's moving into another county. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. That's 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 fine. That's really nice, SG. Hey. Did you see uh, on Fox News there was a uh, lieutenant gen uh, uh, lieutenant general I think named Boykin, B O Y K E N, uh, and I believe that he was uh, a national security advisor under a previous president. Didn't say which one, and uh, his his take on the summit and the reason that uh, he didn't uh, that Trump did not uh, uh, call out. Putin in public on the uh, meddling uh, was the same as mine the other night when uh, you know when I said so you know, in other words we've got we, we, we've got a general out there who's as stupid as you are well yeah that's basically what I was thinking uh, you know when you called me stupid this guy is uh, thinking exactly along the same lines as I am yeah. but hey you know brilliant minds. I was the same guy that thought the same way as Elon Musk on rescuing those kids even though there seems to be a, a, a some fallback on that uh, uh, by one of the divers. What do you mean? What kind of fallback? Uh, uh, the uh, there was a guy who was the uh, on the English team or the head of the English team. Yeah. Said that uh, Musk was only trying to uh, create a um, an, a, an advertising moment uh, uh, for himself by offering up the submarine. 
Does and, does uh, he really need an advertising moment? No, probably not. But this is what the guy accused them from uh, of doing. And then Elon Musk tweeted something negative about that guy, and now that guy is threatening to sue Elon Musk. Uh, uh, lots of luck, you know. Yeah, lots of luck. He wants to sue, sue Elon Musk. He he's got an he's got fuck you lawyer money. Right. You know, the thing is, when you sue somebody, if you sue somebody with so much money, you can't win. If you sue somebody with no money, it's not worth winning. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so. Right. Right. So, you know, whatever. Uh, but, I don't uh, see how lawyers make any money. Yeah. How are you doing, SG? Good. I love Elon Musk. Yeah. I, you, should, you should read his book. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. He's amazing. He was an amazing. He, 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 as, a, as a kid, he read all the books in his uh, elementary school library. Really? Oh, yeah. To yeah, the point where they, they, they ran out of books, and then he read the encyclopedia like twice. Well, yesterday there was a story on the air about a company that's going to send people up in a rocket starting in two years. To go up, two hundred, uh, two, 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 how many millions of dollars? Or it was two hundred grand. Two hundred grand right? a ticket, and, right. and guess who? The, I thought it was Elon Musk. I went because they sh they showed videos of the thing taking off and then landing down on the Earth and they're coming back and landing on Earth. And I'm thinking, hey, Elon Musk got another deal going here. It's Amazon. So, so really? he 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 made his money with PayPal. And yeah. so he was the co-founder of PayPal, Elon Musk. Yeah. Yeah. Then he he actually left Silicon Valley and he went to Hawthorne, California. And that's where he, Hawthorne, which is yeah. like outside, which is um, just south of uh, Santa Monica. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then so he he actually was one of the people that said, "Screw, you know, Silicon Valley." And he, what he did was, yeah. instead of taking his money to make more money, yeah. he said, I can risk my money. And he did, in Hawthorne, uh, establish SpaceX. My uh, daughter's boyfriend works for SpaceX. He's an engineer. Wow. Yeah, I think that's probably a pretty cool job. Oh, my God. He must be rich. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. They just got an apartment together. Well, I mean, Hawthorne is, you know, it's, it's, it's still expensive. Oh, they live in Hollywood. Uh, Hollywood. So that's about a 30, 40 minute commute. Yeah, my, my daughter works for Variety. Yeah. Uh, by, by the way, it's Ray again outdoors. We never get Ray <laughs> indoors anymore. No, I don't, I, I don't have a house anymore. I lost my house because Trump. I see. Yeah. Uh, okay. My house. Yeah, and you're, <laughs> you're are you walking? Hey, the... If you're homeless, you just move to San Francisco. They spend two hundred and thirty million dollars on seventy five hundred homeless people uh, per year. So I know, know it's... out that's thirty seven thousand dollars per homeless person. You know, and... San Francisco. San <laughs> Francisco's new uh, slo San Francisco's new slogan is "We're the shit." Uh, yeah, really. But what the what the deal they is? Are the shit. Yeah, there's an industry supporting homeless. Yeah, but you have and to so you have to realize yep. you have to realize these person people weren't homeless a few years ago, but because no. of what's happened in San Francisco with the cost of living, they say that if you make a hundred was a hundred and three thousand dollars a year, something like that, yeah, you're on the you're edge low of, income. You're yeah. low income. You're sure. on the yeah, edge yeah. of sure. poverty. Yeah. Where I live, it's ninety eight thousand dollars a year. For yeah. a family uh, of four. Yeah. Well, what is it? I think Walnut Creek's the same. I think it's 98 also. Really? Well, I then so. I'm, I'm about 15,000 above low income. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, there's a whole industry now in San Francisco. Um, so it's created this thing where there's no incentive to get rid of the homeless. Yeah. There's no incentive to make it better because people's jobs depend on the homeless the, now. Exactly. That's what I was saying. In San Francisco, yeah. they have a $230 million a year industry uh, yeah. uh, taking care of 7,500 homeless people. And so yeah. nobody wants to give up their little position, and they'd rather... Uh, they'd rather do that than get the people. If they weren't homeless, if they gave them the $37,000 and put them in an apartment, 
Uh, but wait, 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 Phil, where are you going to get an apartment in San Francisco for thirty-seven thousand dollars a year? Oh, well, well, you'd have to move them to Modesto or Stockton or something. Well, then, but, then you're not you're not a San Francisco problem. Well, move them to North Dakota. <laughs> move them yeah. to North Dakota. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, like uh, Ray was saying, this is an industry here, and uh, you have you haven't been here in a while. If you go oh down God. like Thirteenth and Division. It's all tents. The, uh, uh, it's tent after tent after tent. There's makeshift shacks. But, but my, my question is this, okay? Yeah. What is the dynamic that created that? And I think it was the fact that San Francisco is, Sorry. It, is so damn uh, diff, uh, expensive to live in. That it, is, well, it has created its own class of unemployed homeless people. That's right. Well, you know, well, it's I, the rise of Google. Google and Facebook and LinkedIn and Microsoft all around here and all the young people moving into the city with these huge salaries, pushing people out and then nobody, become, Ray, uh, yeah. no, nobody's living on the street that can't afford an apartment in San Francisco but couldn't afford an apartment somewhere else. These, you yeah. know, these people are yeah, but, unemployed and, and, and uh, a lot of them are on drugs. No, right. some of the issues that they're having is the needles are all over. Well, the, the place. question is, yeah, what, the, what came first, one, the poverty or the drugs? I mean, you know, a people. Uh, might, I think the drugs. A lot of people come from poverty. out of town. Alan. What, what are you saying, Ray? A lot of people here now are for, A lot of them travel to the city from other places in the country because they know they can live on the street in San Francisco. And they can get a better. lot of. Now, yeah, why, why, why can't, why can now. they live on the streets in San Francisco? What is the because there's a two hundred and thirty million dollar industry that supports them, and it's and, and San yeah, but it's Francisco not supporting is, them. It's not supporting them living in, on the streets or in tents. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. They feed them. They provide medical care. They uh, they fight each other to have little divisions where tents are allowed. Uh, oh, there's all kinds of but stuff. But they, they do. They it's don't. Like, they don't. Huge. They don't provide them a shelter. Uh, they do, but most of the homeless people don't want to go there because there's a lot of crime and fleas and all this kind of stuff. So, um, so, so here, rather, wait a minute, let me, let me get this straight. Okay. Just so I can grasp my little brain around this. Here is a town where it is one of the most expensive cities in America to live in, where property values are at an all time high. Where the expense of living there, you're on, you're you're in poverty if you go below one hundred and three thousand dollars a year. All right, yeah. and you've got all this gross poverty going on at the same time. This is a place people want to spend this kind of money to live in. Yes. Well, unfortunately, uh, conventions are pulling out of San Francisco because of the uh, uh, the at the atmosphere. Uh, it's not safe. With with this, there's also a lot of crime that uh, that comes with it, the homeless and the drugs and and so forth. Uh, and you know, nobody wants to get stuck with a with somebody's heroin needle. I, you know what I hate about this? San Francisco as a city is one of the most beautiful cities in the United States. Absolutely. Not anymore. It's blighted now uh, in 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 many areas. I mean, if you go to Market Street, you worked on Market Street. Yeah, but remember, it, it, it was beautifully laid out with bricks, and uh, they they did the sidewalk. Oh, I remember, yeah, but I remember Market Street when it was uh, when it was a when it was, yeah. it was seedy as well. Uh, well, it's, it's returning to its roots. Market Street's been seedy for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. but but there are other places that weren't seedy, like over near Potrero Hill, where where Phil's talking about under all the bridges and stuff. There are tents everywhere. It's spreading. It's going further and further. Um, now, the tenderloin now here, is getting bigger. My question yeah. is: Are these homeless a product of the ra the uh, raising cost of living in San Francisco? Uh, are these poverty no. people? Uh, did they make San Francisco their destination? I think, I think it's did. both. I think they did because of all the benefits that they can get. So uh, the San Francisco is making an industry out of house or out of dealing with the homeless. And, and okay. supporting them. And, so, it, and it, there's a lot of support jobs that are behind that. So let's say you did away with the benefits. Okay. Then they go somewhere else. Do you think so? It's pretty tough here. Do you you think, know, I mean. I think they would, yeah. I think they would. I, it, 
They come here because they know, first, they're not going to get kicked off the street. That's the number one thing. Right. They know that they can put up a tent and no one's going to make a move. That's a huge one. Now, why is that? I mean, is there, to a few are there laws saying they can't make them not pitch a tent? Yeah. Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they can't. Pitch a yeah. Tent. It's like uh, see, I know. I mean, I mean let me put it this way. There's got to be a and better Oakland too. There's Oakland's got to be a too. better way of solving this problem than, you know, than forcing them well, out or whatever, you know. Well, New York did it somehow. I mean, Manhattan used to be horrible. Now you walk around, you hardly see any homeless. Yeah. Well, was that due to stop and frisk? No, I don't know. absolutely not. Had nothing so to do what, with what, it. What got the homeless out? Did they just move them down the floor? You know what it was? You know what it was? Everything <laughs> every, everything changes, okay? And, and New York became very expensive, too. And also, there was the gentrification of neighborhoods. I mean, I, I you know, if you came to Harlem... Uh, I we've only been here what seven years, eight almost eight years, yeah. okay. Uh, when we first came here, uh, this was a dangerous place to live. It is now so gentrified. It's True. not. It, I it's so gentrified. I don't like it because it doesn't have a flavor to it. In San Francisco, when when you were living here and when you were growing up here, the Fillmore District was considered what area? It, and when I was first growing up here, that's the way, place where you could uh, find the only uh, only delicatessen food in New York in San Francisco. It was well, like it Jewish. Was the black area it was also Jewish too. Yeah, but in in the in the sixties and seventies, the Fillmore. Well, I'm talking about the fifties. I'm talking about the fifties. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that was considered the black area. Now the Fillmore is considered Lower Pacific Heights, and it is extremely desirable. Uh, and, uh, you know, so th that's how that area gentrified. Uh, even the hate uh, has certainly gentrified. Uh, you know, one-bedroom apartments yeah. are going for $3,500 well, I mean, a month. New York, like I'm saying, uh, Harlem it has gentrified uh, amazingly so. I mean, there, if I go up one block to um, uh, what's 8th Avenue, which is called, uh, uh, who was the... Uh, Avenue America's 7th. Well, 7th is here. Seventh. Here, 7th is Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard. Oh. Yeah. Lennox, so Lennox, Lennox is, yeah. uh, is uh, Malcolm X Boulevard. Right. Uh, however, uh, Malcolm, uh, like with Martin, Lew uh, Martin <laughs> uh, uh, Adam Clayton <laughs> Powell Jr. Boulevard, I don't write that on my mail. I write yeah. 7th Avenue. Yeah. It, they know where to take it. But I'm not... Number one, I didn't like Adam Clayton Powell Jr. I thought he was a fucking crook. <laughs> and secondly... Ah, ah. And secondly, uh, I, I... It's too much to write. You get writer's cramp just sending a letter. <laughs> you know? So whoever came up with the... In fact, the, the signs, it says like A.C. Powell Jr. BLVD. They, they can't get it all on a sign. All on one sign. <laughs> uh, but who was it? Who was it that I was uh, I was thinking of? Uh, uh, they uh, up, up, up the street, the, uh, you know, the... the 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 black uh, lawyer uh, uh, oh three names I'm trying to remember the name of the street uh, and that's Eighth Avenue and that whole thing is gentrified I mean completely gentrified there's no there's no hint of Harlem except for the fact that there's a Harlem Bar and Grill up there you know which is a sports bar Harlem oh, Tavern yeah Alex is the pink teacup up there because there's a reality show. With the guy from the Pink Teacup, a soul food place, right? I never heard of the Pink Teacup. Oh, it's like an old soul food place. Well, the, the only old soul, one of the old soul food places uh, near me is uh, um, uh, Ruth, uh, Amy Ruth's. Right, Not right. Chris? <laughs> no, Amy Ruth's. And they're all making Chris. chicken and waffles now. Chicken and waffles. Chicken and waffles. Chicken and waffles. Chicken and waffles. Well, the thing is, at Amy Ruth's, you can also get crawfish and waffles, and you can get, you know, a whole bunch of other things and waffles. I can't get them uh, because I, I'm on that diet, and a waffle is... <laughs> and I always thought can. sausage and waffles was the correct combination. No, but chicken and waffles works, believe it or not. <laughs> believe it or not. Fried chicken... They flop yeah. it down on top of a uh, on top of a, of a waffle. You can put the syrup on both of them, yeah. and, and it tastes great. 
<laughs> well, you know, you, you gave me that look. It's like you never had it, so don't. Uh, well, you know. I, I've had chicken waffles, and I didn't see what the benefit was in it. And uh, it was at a, it was in Walnut Creek at a place that you know was supposedly well known for it. I wanted to like it, but uh, I, I didn't. You know, but I've had a Belgian waffle in Belgium, and that was good. You know, I've had a Belgian waffle in New York. You know. Yeah, they made it on the street. Yeah. You know, Phil and Alex. <laughs> yeah. That was so. It was it last night? It was so damn funny. Look, look into your camera. Look, in, look into your camera, he, will you? Look into your camera. Oh, okay, you know. Sorry. I'm on my phone again. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I wasn't here last night. Oh, well, it was the night before then because, uh, you know, you didn't have sound and all that. Uh, and then you were like mute. It was really funny, that he, whole first he, part. Well, I was watching. It, it's still funny. <laughs> he still doesn't have sound. No, I'm still using the other camera. It worked on the next show. It worked for Jack's show. But, uh, yeah, oh, uh, SG is uh, giving us a, a, oh, a muted version of, uh, <laughs> of himself. He's, he's doing his impression of you with your $1,000 control board. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah I think you're right about the mute button. Though. My son has a boom Yeti microphone in there. And, I mean, I need to go in there, and he won't let me touch his stuff. <laughs> but if I went in there, I'd have great quality, Alex, and good sound and everything, and you'd love me. Yeah, the Eddie microphone isn't that great. It's well, a $39 microphone. $39 microphone, yeah. yeah. Oh, so he didn't pay a fortune for that. This, okay. this is a $150 microphone here. Yeah. I have a $150 ATR, I think. The thing's awesome. I, don't, I just plug it right in the computer. I don't have to do anything. Yeah. Well, see, yeah. Phil, that's what you should be doing. You should probably have yourself a Yeti microphone there plugged into your USB yeah. port, and you could probably get the audio. But no, oh, I'm you, sure I could. You have to have but, it go through a control board. In fact, you could do that right now if you've got a USB microphone. No, no, I don't. I don't but, either. Uh, I've got a couple of these, but, uh, you know, they're, uh, I'll get this thing going. I, I, bought, I, I know I, it's the mute a, thing. A, a while back, I bought a Berlinger board. And it had yeah. USB, it had USB output, right? And I yeah. put it into my audio here, and I brought it up uh, Z on the USB port, and I got the sound, and it was terrific. And then all of a sudden, pff, nothing. Die. Well, Die. That's the same thing with this one. Yeah. So, uh, you know, maybe the guy sold me a pig in a polk. You know? Yeah. To me, to Can me. Can you say polk or polk? Polk. Uh, polk. Polk Street. It's a polk. To it's me, polk. microphones you use a Canon connector. You know, that gets you your audio. But echoey. The, huh? I'm in an echo chamber right now. Where are you? Where, where are I'm you? Under, I'm under under Highway one oh one. I'm walking under Highway one oh one. Really? And I'm getting my steps to the day through you there. Hey, uh, is there any homeless uh, under that at overpass? Yeah. Sometimes there are. One time I scare early in the morning I scared a guy out of the bushes right up here a little ways. Yeah. Yeah. He was sleeping in there. You know, uh, there was one other thing about the homeless in San Francisco. That, so I've, I've been here since I was a little kid and lived here. The thing is, is the weather is so great that it attracts homeless because yeah. they know they're never going to freeze to death or burn yes. up. Right. Um, and uh, the second thing, and I wasn't, you know, I was just small at the time, but Reagan, apparently there were facilities that were open for, for drug addicts and people with mental yeah, he closed health them issues he closed them and then he promised that he was going to open it privatize it you know but it never happened you know so, what uh, happened was what happened was if i remember it's gotten worse and worse but if i remember correctly what reagan did was that he, you had all these uh people who were insane and they were insane because they had been in the war in vietnam uh, and, what year was that and they had uh, they had uh 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 PTSD uh, and things like yeah. that, yeah. And then he closed all the mental institutions, which is what we were just talking about, and these people were just left to being on the streets. Um, and we here didn't, we are. We, we didn't and it's never changed. We didn't take, you know, we, 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 we talked the talk, you know, uh, uh, thank you for your service. Oh, God bless our, our troops. And then when they come back home and they're sick and they have a PTSD, we don't do shit for them. Alex... Uh, what year did Reagan let these uh, uh, people? I don't, that I, I don't remember. Of, it might have been before the Vietnam War was over with. Alex, there was, it was seventy-one or seventy-two. Yeah, 
Yeah, I know it was when I was like about eight or nine years old. I, I remember. All right. Deal. Well, yeah. That is how many years ago? Forty-eight. Yeah. yeah. Now, now you're still bitching about something that was done forty-eight years ago. If no. you don't like it, they've had no, no. Well, I'm saying, look, 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 look we've we've had a lot no, of. No, I'm just we, saying they haven't corrected. We've had a lot it's of. Just it's and it's a time to stop blaming Reagan. Well, no, uh, I'm not blaming Reagan. Reagan. I, I, but I Alex is. Just, <laughs> oh, I, oh, I, I believe. I, uh, I believe implicitly. In fact. I believe implicitly in blaming Reagan because he can't defend himself. Uh, yes, <laughs> Charlene. Well, yeah, that's a good one, Charlene. Hey, uh, you know what? Oh, what the, oh, uh, wait a minute, the, Char, uh, but hold on a second, SG. Charlene had her hand up and she wanted to say something. Well, who did it in New York, Alex? Do you know? Like, who did that in New York? Let all the homeless out without their meds. That I can't remember. <laughs> was it Giuliani? Then I know I Phil. Don't get mad at me, because I know he's your boy. You know you love Giuliani. I can't remember <laughs> who did that in New York, because I I don't think I who was, was here before. before. Remember you couldn't remember Cuomo. Who yeah. was before Giuliani? I can't remember now. Dinkins. Oh, Stinkins. I used to know. An oh wait a guy minute. That was hated it, him. There was Koch, 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 Dinkins, Giuliani. Is that the way it worked? Yeah. 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 I think so. Yeah. I lived under Koch and okay. Dinkins. Right? Okay, SG, you're on board now. Go ahead. What are we talking about? Oh. <laughs> the homeless. The homeless. The homeless. No, we're not. <laughs> the homeless. Yeah, we were talking about the homeless. Yeah, particularly in San Francisco. Oh, you can't remember what you wanted to say. Well, or Bacon. No, it, it, was, it was different from the homeless, but I'm, I'm a big proponent for helping the homeless. You know, we should all help the homeless, but we need to give them incentive to work, to, you know, it's like in my neighborhood, uh, we have some neighbors that give food out for coyotes, and they give food out for bobcats. And you know what happens to those people, those, those animals? They learn they lose they kill your dog and cat no they depend on that food and they can't go back into the wild yeah it, i mean this is in our neighborhood I'm, I'm not talking about things i don't know about and all of a sudden then they come back so we we need to have forget about republican and democrat we need to figure out a way for us to give people incentive that they work and have self-worth and then don't depend on people so they you know can create okay their lives let me let me uh, argue with that point you're All assuming right. that everybody who is homeless no. has the ability to work that that's what the safety net is for no 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 but you you assume they have the ability to work where some of these people can't work because of impairments or whatever Others are mentally impaired and can't hold down a job. I mean, there are so many other reasons that people are are impaired. Uh, and, there, and, and so to say, a, so to say that... What about Lighthouse for the Blind? You know, they, they give people, they give people the, the self-worth of earning something. It may not be, they may need a helping hand and a safety net with other programs. That's fine, but, but Phil, 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 work. Phil, Phil. There are some people who are incapable of working because of mental problems. Absolutely. And what are we going to do about them? You can't tell them to go get a job. They can't hold one down. No, but there, yeah. there are programs for them. Okay, let me ask you this. What if a guy is missing all his front teeth? Do you think he can get a job? As long as he doesn't have to whistle. No, no. Do you, don't make a joke. Do you, do you think he could get a job? Uh, yeah. It'd be, it'd, be, it'd be hard for him to interview and someone take him seriously. It depends yeah. on the job. I mean, he could pump gas. Uh, oh, oh, really? If he comes in gas, and, he's, and he's missing all his front teeth, do you think the guy's going to hire him to pump gas? Just better not smile. You know? Uh, yeah. No, I mean... Yeah. Alex, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jeff, great, Jeff has his hand up. Uh, Jeff. Alex, you have a great... You have a great I know when I get... People, so, when yes. People well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Jeff, wait a minute. SG, uh, uh, Jeff had his hand up. Jeff. Thank you. When I pump the gas, I'm the gas pumper. Yeah. Right. 
And so is oh, my wife. Yeah, when, so when, when, when was the last time, island? Phil, you yeah. ever went to a gas station and like a guy God came God out with his little bow tie on and started pumping Alex, your gas? It's called full serve. Only two states you pump you pump your own gas. Like, like you, other guy pumps, and I'm in one of them. At one of them's Oregon, isn't it? Oregon, there's a law that anybody who puts gas in somebody's car has to be pumping it. Has to you work. got them. You got them. Yeah. 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 What's the other one? So, so, it Oregon. was a New Jersey expression. Yeah, New you Jersey? pump it out here. Oh, the Jersey? guy does okay. it, right. Yeah. New Jersey, states, you, they have to pump your gas for you. Oh, just Everywhere like Oregon. Else you do it yourself, right. If you're Oregon, disabled. Or, you can uh, tap your horn, and they got to come out and pump your gas, and not charge you any more uh, to do it. Okay. So it now, has to be a guy but, with no but my, my, he, 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 Let's get back to this whole this whole thing about you know we have to find these people jobs and so on. There's a reason why these people are not. The reason they're not working many times doesn't have anything to do. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Charlene, don't move, don't move, Alex. Yeah. Look at that cabinet. You think you got drugs? Look, look what Charlene takes. What do I have? <laughs> what do I have? In your I cabinet with her cat uh, dishes. Are those, are those, are those, dr dr are are those drugs? Yeah. Oh, you oh, moved your camera, Charlene. Prescriptions? Move. Yeah, yeah, you moved your camera. Move, move it back. Uh, look at that. See? Can you see? Yeah. Uh oh. Those are mine, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm a drug addict, yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying that, hey, you know, Alex complains he's got to take a couple of pills. Let's you know? see here. I got my my, Z my Xanax. And they're not psychic. And, and you need that just to do this show. You're not psychic. <laughs> and, and this is another bottle of Xanax it's almost through with. Let's see here. Here's some salon pos that I have. I have a whole drug thing back here. Are we yeah. doing Bennett's waiting room now, or no? We we haven't gotten to that section yet. I, I saw I oh. saw that in the, in the shot. And I, okay, I just let me get back to this to this, po lost, this point. And I is don't know if I flushed it, and they had to yeah. do an X-ray, and I still don't know where it is. Some I people, swallowed like a drone or something yeah, yeah. with uh, a camera. <laughs> okay, let me get back to this. Some people are just incapable of working. They're psychologically. Uh, Incapable. Of There's working. exceptions. It's not that everything. they're. It's not that they don't work because they're lazy. There are also people who do want to work, but they can't find work. You know. There's that's exceptions another. to everything, Alex. No, I'm and not. I'm everything. not talking about exceptions. There are reasons why we have homeless people. Now, but granted, yeah. I'm, I'm going to grant you that there's maybe a certain percentage, but it is. It's nowhere. It's maybe like only a fraction of the amount of people who are homeless who just are lazy and don't want to work and want to live off the dole, all right? But I don't think the great majority of people like living that way, and I think most people would love to have some kind of work, but they're not qualified to do anything. Oh, that's not true. But you know, let, oh, wait a second. Let, me also, let me also say this. You know, people living in San Francisco, why wouldn't they go to Albuquerque? Why wouldn't they go to, you know, Boise, Idaho, where they could maybe, you know, start anew, uh, build themselves up, and go somewhere else? Well, that, that was like uh, like uh, uh, Sam Kinison used to have a, a, a whole bit about uh, Bangladesh. Why are we raising money for food for Bangladesh? What they don't need, what they need is not, they don't need food, they need luggage. <laughs> And we can send them somewhere where the food is. No, it's not where we're sending <laughs> you know? them. I'm saying that the 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 uh, the lifestyle that someone wants to live, these people will never lift themselves out of San Francisco ever, never. There's never. too many services available to them. It's a trap. So, Welfare so, is a trap. Yes, they, and most they, of those they, people they, work. And most, and given, most they've been given this thing where they now can crap on the street and stay there. I'm saying shove them out. There's Go one other them. law. There's one other law that you all forgot about. If you steal something under $900, they can't and won't prosecute you. So there's a rash of automobile break-ins where they break the window, they take w what they can see there, mm -hmm. and they don't get prosecuted. Do in they, San Francisco, do they, uh, to make sure they don't get arrested, do they bring an appraiser with them? Yes. <laughs> well... Uh, you know that's uh, that's the deal, and that's why auto burglaries are up. But um, you know, I I think Ray Ray has the secret to uh, 
uh, to employment. We should all become actors, out of work actors. There you and go. I'm therefore, <laughs> we're not unemployed. We're just waiting in between jobs. Yeah. I don't have my SAG or whatever card, my after, but <laughs> I'm starting to SAG. Yeah, I've been sagging too. <laughs> <laughs> I had friends that were SAG. Yeah. 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 I would rob. I would. I went to my back pocket to see if I had my wallet, but it's in the other room. I'd show you my SAG card just to, you know. We should take a state like Wyoming, and just shove all these people. <laughs> yeah, Wyoming's gonna love that. Isn't that a Republican state? Yeah, just shove them all in there. Uh, I, you know, I, I think California, and New York, they get what they deserve. It would be interesting. It would be interesting to know. And I don't think we have this statistic. How many of those homeless people living on the streets of San Francisco are, in fact, from California? Uh, I, I would say maybe many, but I, the big problem is drugs. I don't think drugs is the problem. Yeah, but the only drugs, the, the dr other drugs is in many cases isn't a problem; it's an effect. In other words, well, poverty brings on drugs because drugs become a relief from poverty. Well, how much does it cost to get drugs? I mean, you could be out of poverty. It's like smokers. You know, they, they smoke, and they smoke $20, $20 a, a worth of cigarettes hey, a listen, day. Hey, if listen, if I were a drug addict in California, I would not smoke cigarettes because it's cheaper to be a drug addict. <laughs> the, 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 other, the other thing is I have worked with people and, and through HUD and stuff like that. These people have a sophisticated network where they know how to survive in that area. It's not like, oh, my God, these people, you know, they're going to, they know how to survive, and they know how to get free stuff, and they know how to be there and live. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and the city make sure that they get it. Yeah, Charlene has her hand up. Charlene? Alex, I know you mentioned that you saw Wild Wild Country on Netflix, right? Uh, yes, what was that again? I'm trying to remember what it was. Well, you know how you know they brought in the homeless to, to be voters, and then they started killing them off, right? Because they became a problem. You know, something just snapped in my head because I saw that. I'm Did trying to, I'm try see? I remember the documentary. I'm just trying to remember the gist of it, and it was... Uh, they brought them in to become voters, but then they took over or something. It was. Uh, it, it, was it just got it, to be is crazy. That, the that they became Republicans, so they decided to kill them off, so they couldn't <laughs> vote. <laughs> well, it, it was a guru from India, and oh, that oh, oh yeah, that, oh, that, oh, oh, uh, that was uh, yeah, yeah. Sri Rajneesh. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, now I it. now I remember the documentary. You've yeah, got it. That's it. Yeah, you, because you were describing it all wrong. I mean, it was the Sri Rajneesh who decided, his people decided, we're going to find a city somewhere and we're going to just take it over. And that's exactly what they did in the middle of Oregon. And, and Oregon had a fit and started fighting the Sri, Sri Rajneesh. And yeah. then they brought in the homeless to try to get more people so they could be on the council. Yeah, and they brought they, in homeless yeah. people. To, no, it got yeah, outrageous. Yeah. And they actually murdered the homeless people, some of them, right? I don't know if they murdered oh, them, but so. it was it was pretty ugly. Oh, I saw the whole thing, Alex. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not. You well, know, it was kind of. I, I described it as kind of being like a cartoon where you know you, uh, you, you know you've got you've got rats, so you you go get a cat, and then there are too many cats, so then you get dogs to kill the cats. That's what and happened. Then there are too That's many it. dogs, and you get lions to kill the dog. You know. <laughs> and that you know that the play, the Bogwan had a hundred Rolls Royces. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He was like the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi or something. A friend of mine went up there uh, and sold them uh, metal tables, and they bought like 150 metal tables uh, to uh, to put out where they could meet and eat. Uh, and and th these were high end tables too, uh, and. Uh, uh, so, uh, he, and he got to stay there. He met uh, the Bogwans. Uh, the Bogwans. Uh, there was right. a woman. There was a woman that was like his second in command. Right. Well, she was. What's she her got, name? Yeah, uh, she's in. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, I know. I'm as bad as you are, Phil. And uh, so he he met her, and he stayed there for three days. That was his name, Bogwan. Yeah. Bogwan Sri Rajneesh. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and this woman is in the documentary. She's kind of the focal point of the documentary. She starts the whole thing off. Yeah. And she got away scot-free, although they had her on charge of the murder and everything. But she got away and escaped to Europe. Uh, what did they get the... How did they bust that thing up? I think it just, you know... It, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly how it happened. Yeah, they, I oh, I know uh, how it happened. They actually uh, was they, it, they, uh, they, they was depo- it they, tax fraud? No, they they deported the Bhagwan. Oh yeah, and that started the whole thing falling apart. You know. Yeah. And then he, he dropped his secretary, and he, he didn't take her with him where he went. She had this weird name like Missy name. somebody or it was yeah. a, it was a weird name. He split. Some people went off with whatever. I know. I wish I could remember her name. The Indian secretary, you know, to, to the Bhagwan. Tess True. What's the name of this? Of this wild, story? wild country. Wild, wild country. Okay. It's called. I want to see this. Yeah, it's so really. It's quite. A lot of time. It's, it's quite. Fa- it's, no, it's about four episodes, I think. No, oh, it's more okay. than that, Alex. Was it? My husband was having a fit because he didn't want to know what the hell it was or whatever, and I, I'm trying to watch it and. You know, like, but I did finish the whole thing. You know, I watched it intently. Yeah, I mean, I watched the whole thing. Yeah, uh, but I. But it's, it's so amazing that I can't. Crazy. Yeah, that'll it goes show back you. That'll show either either how far I've gone, or how far uh, uh, this whole thing of binge watching has gone. That I binge watched something and can't even remember what it was about. Exactly, Alex. You know. Uh, because it's it, much binge watching. It, because I, binge uh, binge watching is a lot like potato chips. I think. I think that's the problem with it. Uh, hello, Tony. How are you? Pretty good. I'm tired a little bit. But, uh, you, you know, the thing with binge watching is you don't get the quality of watch that you get when you watch one uh, episode at a time or once a week. And then you wait for the next episode. You know something, though? I don't want that. I want the option. I want the option to either watch the next one immediately or wait a little bit before I watch the next one. Nobody says you have to watch every one of them at the same time, you know, in a, in a, small, a couple of yeah. day period. I don't know how many times. The first time I ever binge watched anything, mm-hmm. I got the CDs of, of all the seasons of Prison Break. And I started Prison watching Break. that. And it was like a week or a week and a half of prison break, uh, totally, totally consumed. And I'd be up late. I, I, I don't remember. The I'd first, watch like 10 the first thing, a day. the first thing that we ever binge watched, okay. You did the Breaking Bad, remember, Alex? Was well, I went online and downloaded every episode of Breaking Bad. I remember you said. And I had them all up to the last <laughs> week, I think. Uh, and we sat here. For a, I guess maybe a week on and off watching yeah, all, pretty strong, I mean, all, all, all 65 episodes of this thing. And well worth it, by the way. And then the last night comes on. We had a time so that when the last night came on, we were there ready to watch it, right? And I hated it because there were commercials in it. Breaking Bad, I didn't realize this at first, because when you were binge-watching it, I hadn't seen any episodes. But once I watched the Breaking Bad, that was such a good uh, series. Uh, but then there was that other one, uh, Better Call Saul. Yeah. Now, what happened to that? Is there no more Saul? It, no, it's around on It's coming back, so coming back in a couple of weeks. Really? Oh, season two? Yeah, season three. Oh, yeah. Oh, three. Oh, but it's been a, a year or two since the... Oh, it's uh, been a year. It's been a long time. It's been a year. Yeah. I love that guy. Just a year? I love that show, Better Call Saul. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been like two years, I think. Oh, yeah, no, I don't think it's been two years. I don't no? think it's been two years okay. now. It's been a long time. You know. Um, like, right now, I the thing is that I... The thing about watching every week... I would prefer to have the choice of whether I want to binge watch it or not binge watch it. Hey, uh, can I ask you something? Else? <laughs> what? You, I think I'm getting old. You know, like now, like you just said, I'd rather have the opportunity of having the shows there because I notice I lose interest now if I have to wait a week. Well, are you for, or you forget that it's on? I forget. Yeah, it's like oh, you know, and I just go to something you else. You know, then. girlfriend loves Handmaid's Tale. She can't get enough of Handmaid's Tale, but she keeps forgetting that there's a new one every Wednesday. 
So she goes I, weeks without watching it, not realizing that it's still on. She forgets it. You know the way they do, do I'm right. dying up here? Uh, each week is a new episode, but if you miss a few, you can go back and see the whole season. You know, they're, they're all well, there. Well, I mean, that's the I'm way it is on that HBO. I'm, dying up here. I'm watching that one. Uh, I like the way they uh, you can you you can binge watch what you didn't see, but you have to wait a week uh, for the newest uh, for the newest one. Well, so. uh, it, it, what's happening is I think Netflix is veering a little bit away from binge watching. Like the Letterman show wasn't a binge watch. There was a new one every month, you know. And there's some rumors that you know they just bought up one of my favorite shows, Lucifer. Uh, and uh, they're going to uh, they're going to produce that one, and and there are rumors that it's going to be a weekly show as opposed, which is the way everybody was watching it before, as opposed to binge watching it. Um, yeah, but I'm so happy that you know it's it, now these shows that get canceled have a chance for a for a new life. You know they can go somewhere else. You've yeah. you've heard of the uh, the acronym uh, FOMO. Fear missing out? Uh, no. no. David Spade just talked about that on a thing I watched. So the new the new one is Joy of Missing Out. J-O-Y-O. Joy of Missing Out? So what is the Joy of Missing Out? Okay. Well, you don't have to do all this crap you're talking about. Yeah. You don't watch it, you didn't miss anything like, right? You know, you're out listening to the birds. Sure. Have have you there's a david spade series called the carpet brothers have you ever seen that one from david spade the carpet brothers no oh it is hilarious why uh, because it's about people who lay carpet uh, oh, yeah, it's about yeah. these three brothers no I still watch. boy, uh, boy i'm gonna show. binge watch a show. i'm gonna binge watch a show about where? carpet that's yeah, exciting i know that's true very very funny uh hilarious <laughs> stuff Okay, she runs a better sale than Phil. Alex? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you guys talk about it, and I just missed it, or have you seen that? They're talking about you cry at the end of the HBO uh, uh, documentary about uh, Robin Williams. I haven't watched it yet. I was just I haven't gotten it, through so it all the way. I try to watch it, and something happens, and I keep watching it from the beginning over and over. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the one yet. to watch, if you never watched it, was Judd Apatow. Did a documentary on Gary Shandling, which, oh, was, I saw that. which was extraordinary. It was, yes. Really? I think it was really good, Gary Shandling. Yeah. I think he wrote some Carter episodes, too. Some what? I think he wrote, wrote Welcome Back Carter episodes, Gary Shandling. I don't know. Uh, he would have been too young. No, I don't think so. No, he didn't. No. Was but he it? had index cards or something. I like that. Diaries, I diaries of mm. everything. Like, you know, after his death, they found a lot of stuff, right? And, they yeah. talk about it, right? Well, it's called The Zen of Gary Shandling is the name of the know, documentary. Yeah. And a really lot of excellent. comedians in there talk about him and pay tribute to him and stuff. And actually, I mean, I always liked Gary Shandling, but I never uh, appreciated him as much as I did once I saw this documentary. Me either, Alex. You know? Me either. Because then you know, know, when you see somebody's brilliant. work, it, it's shown in, in order. Uh, in rapid succession, as you do in a documentary, you sometimes come to appreciate somebody better than you did when it was all going by in slow yep. motion. And it's a shame, Alex, that he didn't know in his lifetime, probably himself, sort of how, like how appreciated. Right? What were you saying, SG? What? Well, sort of like Alex Bennett. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. A fine wine. He's an acquired taste. Yeah, yeah. Acquired uh, taste. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know. You know hey, Robin listen, Williams. listen. If if I drop dead tomorrow, will you all do me a favor? <laughs> and make sure that nobody comes up with any of this legend shit about me. Because, you know, if you wouldn't say it while I was alive, then fuck you. I don't want you to say it when I'm dead. Okay? Well, they, no, they, right, they, right. Right about that. they should talk about you now when you're living. Everyone That's knows. what I love about you, Alex. No, wait a minute. <laughs> you, wait a minute. SG's trying to say something. Yeah. No, I was going to say, everyone now, tell him he's a legend. Well, I, I wouldn't want to tell him that, but I, I love him. I don't know what it is, but... <laughs> You're legendary. You know, uh, from my coast film, he's gonna try to sell from my coast coast to my present. He has been the thread that has wo interwoven uh, in in my life from the time I was 17 
to to sixty four. Who? You know? Who? Me? Yeah. I guess. Uh, you know, uh, between the the radio shows and 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 it's a it's been a, a sort of a constant. I mean, there's been years there where uh, you know I lost track of you, uh, your serious years and. And I so did forth. too. Yeah, I lost track of him a little. What serious? But, what serious years? When you were at serious. Oh, it's serious. Oh, I thought you meant my serious years. Serious. Yeah. Years. <laughs> no, that's like uh, Picasso's blue period. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did write. He did write an episode of Connor. I just looked at it. He wrote Horseshack vs. Carvelli. Okay. Well, I, you know. I one think episode. Could be right, Alex. Alex. I saw that. Yeah. Listen, my old friend, my old friend, who, who, my old friend who, who died, who worked, who was the editor of Hustler. Uh, Bruce David wrote episodes of uh, Al. You told me Family Ties. And Family Ties, yeah. I love Family Ties with yeah. Michael J. Fox. That was like one of my favorite shows. I could see Bruce writing that because it was political. Oh, look, at, I, look, hey, yeah. look at the sun going down in California. Oh, it looks nice. Yeah. Hey, Alex, did Rob Williams live where you live in Marin, Marin County? Was that your Never son? Yeah. Uh, right in Napa. Well, Robin Williams' house was, he originally, he had a house in San Francisco, uh, right above Baker Beach there. What's that? Yeah. Expensive name. I know where the house is. House yeah. Is. yeah. Well, I, and then he, when, when I went up to visit him, when I went up to visit him. Then he moved to Napa and then he went to Tiburon. When I went up to visit him, he was living in Napa. In that ranch on Wall Street? It was at the end of the road and it had a mailbox that said, uh, uh, what, what, what did it say? Old McDonald's Farm. I, I oh, really don't. I really so don't. I really this. don't remember. Trying to sound right. But I do remember that he had a party up there, and I can't remember what it was. It for was his exactly. birthday. It was his birthday. Yeah, that right. was it. And all I remember for, for quite a while, he had he had a house in the city, and yeah. one in Napa. For quite but, a long but time. one of the most. Well, the one in Napa was like in 1980. One of the ugliest sights I ever yeah. came upon was I went into a room, and there was Tommy Smothers naked. <laughs> oh, God. You had some crazy life. Alex, are they all alive, the Smothers Brothers? Yeah. No. Smothers Brothers? They're alive. Are they both alive? Yeah, they're both alive. They're both alive? Oh, I, I so. didn't know that. I, don't oh, I was in this hotel in Indiana once. Uh, where's Letterman from in Indiana? Uh, I was in a hotel there. It was this cheap-ass hotel, and there was the Smothers Brothers in the, in the breakfast, eating breakfast. Yeah. Well, SG signed off. Uh, Smothers Brothers. This, they were hilarious. Uh, he'll probably be back. I love that. Let's see. So, um, uh, yeah, he, the house, it was in Seacliff. Uh, Robin Williams' house in the city. That was Seacliff. That's right. Seacliff, that's right. Around 25th and... It's, it's and yeah. So, yeah, it's on a corner. It takes yeah, a yeah, it was yeah. Up on, it was up on a knoll. Yeah, and it's like, it was triangular shaped. You know, yeah. it's funny that corner. Mrs. Doubtfire <laughs> took place in a house in San Francisco, right? Like, that was San Francisco. Yeah, but that was Doubtfire. like, yeah. There is no evi there's no, there's no evidence here that any of the Smothers brothers are dead. So. Huh? What did what you say, Alex? There's no evidence here that the Smothers Brothers are dead or any. Yeah, I'm so glad. I don't want to. You know. Do you realize that Robin Williams is now a traffic jam every day? Oh, you mean the the tunnel? Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> That's horrible. Well, I I liked the tunnel and I liked it when it wasn't called was the Robin Waldo. Williams. It was the, the Waldo Gray the Waldo. tunnel. Waldo. They named it after him. Yeah. The Waldo Gray. Who, who, who was Waldo? I know. You, Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> but, well, you, you know what's the st strangest thing is in uh, in uh, you have the uh, um, the they call it the uh, Richmond San Rafael Shit, Bridge. Sorry, they call it the Richmond San Rafael Bridge, but that's not the name of it, and I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, it like uh, now we lost Ray. Oh boy, uh, he's like, uh, pushed the wrong button probably. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's named after uh, it was named after a state senator or somebody like that. In well, one direction, in the other direction, it's called the Marin Bridge or something like that. Well, you know, uh, Willie Brown's got his name in one direction on the Bay Bridge. Oh, really? Yeah, the old span 
Yeah. Going towards Oakland is the Willie Brown Bridge. So, in other words, the Willie Brown Bridge is the bridge that goes nowhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> they took it down. Am I gone still? No, you're, no, you're, you're back. No, you're, you're back. back. You're back. They I, finished tearing it down, the old one. I don't know what happened to SG. It looks like he's, he's well, he could be online. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he's out for No, uh, he, he did one of these. He had to go. So, Phil, I want to know from you. I, I want, I, I got to get your take on this because, you know, I love your, your excuses. Don't, ha haven't you had a little bit of, regret about Trump in the last couple of days? I mean, this constant changing of position? Well, you know, uh, I realize that uh, I mean, there's, there's he's, no, had a, there's no he's had a step back from a couple of things. All right? No, but then but, the next day he moves forward back into them again. You can't you tell. Know, he's, he's changed his opinion every day since Monday. About well, we thing. didn't. Uh, the people that voted for him didn't elect him because he was a seasoned politician. They elected him because he wasn't. And these are some mistakes that can be made by uh, someone that is is not a seasoned politician. Doesn't uh, hasn't been repeating and regurgitating. Well, then have we learned? The have we learned? Have we learned our years. lesson, Phil? Have we learned huh? our le Have we learned our lesson? Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, there was uh, a thing that Churchill said. He said, never give up, never give up, persevere, sort of. That's not pretty uh, Anyway, if you give up, it's the only way to fail. And I believe that Trump is doing the right thing. I'm happy with the things that he's doing. And uh, I support what he is doing. And if he's made a few verbal faux pas, do you support, so, uh, support him in, few, in bringing no. Trump, Putin over so he can interview the Justice Department? Well, he he dialed that back. You know, he said, "No, that's not going to happen." Oh well, he, wait, he dialed it back bad. already. He just dialed it in a few hours ago. Well, no, he said that our, our people would not be sent over to Russia for interrogation. Uh, originally, uh, what happened during the summit is uh, Putin said, we'll, give you, we'll let you interview our people if you let us interview these people. And uh, I guess uh, Trump didn't know that uh, those people were uh, wanted by Putin and probably going to be murdered if they sent him over. Yeah. That would have caused that, World War III. I thought the Senate had a thing today where they all unanimously, unanimously voted that that would not be allowed. Yeah, I, I don't know if they did that, but uh, oh. Trump said it wasn't going to be, it wasn't going to happen. Well, maybe he heard that they were going to completely. But in the shut beginning, it, down, it so was going to happen. happen. What? In the yeah, he said he said he's not sending uh, the, the Americans over there. No, he didn't say. Yeah, after he, he knew the Senate wasn't no, going to allow. No, he said it. he's well, inviting Putin and his people over to interview them here. Well, I guess that you can keep him safe here, and especially if Why would you us... want to allow this guy to even interview them? Well, because it was a deal. Oh, God. Oh, this we is the, oh well, the then, uh, then I, if that's what the art of the deal is, Mueller, I want to burn Mueller, those books. Mueller was going to get to interview the people that he indicted, the Russians. And, uh, you know, I don't see where these interviews were going to go because all they're going to say was, it wasn't me, you know. Uh, they're, they're not going to fall on their sword and say, oh, yes, we interfered with your election, uh, you know. Jeff is they're just sitting, Jeff is, Jeff is sitting there bemused. Yes, Jeff. I don't know. I, I'm just, I cannot believe what this president pulls because every other day he changes his mind. Well, it doesn't matter because the things that he doesn't change doesn't. his mind aren't great. Like what? Uh, he's going to have uh, two uh, uh, Supreme Court appointees. Wait, wait a minute, wait, uh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. That's not something he did. That's something he is has to do. No, he went to Man. Kennedy he and he said, he, if you retire, I'll put one of your clerks in. He made a deal with Kennedy to retire. No, early. he didn't make a deal with Kennedy. Kennedy came to him and said, I'm going to retire. I would appreciate it if you would look at some of my clerks. Right. He, no, uh, no, no. Don't, to, don't, 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 don't put appointment of Supreme Court judges as something he did. It was nothing he accomplished. He had to yeah. do it. 
I heard uh, on the news that he approached Kennedy about retiring, and uh, and the deal was that he would put uh, one somebody that clerked for him, and that Kavanaugh is one. I'm that not saying, for but Kennedy. I'm saying, uh, it, uh, it, well, and let's face it, the guy isn't uh, Supreme Court justice yet. You know, he will be. Uh, I, I think that one will fly through. There's already even three or four Democrats. I don't know their names, but uh, 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 on this morning's news, <laughs> I love they this said song. that there was like three or four Dems that were going to vote for him. Danger is, high voltage. Is that a comment on our show, Ray? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, are we going to see you on Saturday, Ray? Uh, uh Oh, I, I, I bought tickets to go see Angels in America at Berkeley Rep months ago, and I can't go. Oh, well, I'm, I'm going uh, to uh, uh, I know. John Perulis. I know, I really wanted Saturday. to go, Where, but I Well, can't, when, I can't when you go. see him, will you ask him why he hasn't called in the last two yeah, weeks? Yeah, I, I talked, I, uh, he texted me uh, yesterday and said that he was uh, working on some projects and he was uh, very busy, but he wants to call in. Yeah. Well. Matter of fact, uh, uh, I'll turn my phone back on. I'll tell you what. You I know. don't understand this concept of work. Yeah, I understand. Uh, it eludes me. Why uh, don't you move to San Francisco? There's all these programs that well, you could take advantage of. I'm not homeless, but that's only because I'm squatting. Yeah, <laughs> you are a squatter, right? Hey, in hey, San Francisco, they'll give you a tent. Really? Yeah, they will. Yeah, yeah. they will. They'll give you a tent. That's why they're all the same color. They're all blue. Really? Yeah. They all get tents. They give them tents. Yeah. Well, it's better. Than, well, I think it's better than having them sleep on the street. Now we got to on the street. They're on the sidewalk. We got to do something about them pooping on uh, on the streets. You know. Well, because they don't give them yeah. bathrooms. Defecating. They, Did you they, they, hear about that Israeli guy that opened up a delicatessen in Southern California? And uh, and the uh, antifada and so forth went up to his deli on the opening day and threw human feces against the window. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was in today's news. But that's not the same. Was feces. it kosher feces? I hope uh, it was a kosher deli. Oh, okay. And not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alex, did you get my uh, heart rate chart? Yes. Oh, okay. And I, and according to that chart, I'm dead. No, you're, yeah, I know that's true. I saw that, but well, I can get one with bigger, long, you know, higher ages. Yeah, Alex, do you do Fitbit on your on your watch or something? No, no. Because you should do that when you're exercising. Well, now. no, the no, reason the reason is I have to have my uh, I, I with my i Apple Watch. I have to have my Apple phone give it the information. And it's usually in my pocket, and so when I'm walking, it tells me how many steps I've taken. But now, when I'm at the gym, I put it on a little ledge in front of me so I can watch something, and so I don't get the benefit of knowing how much energy I have expended. Oh, I see. Oh, my Garm I have a Garmin watch, and I can... It still it syncs up with the phone and it tells me exactly how much I expended. And yeah, stuff. but if your phone no. is in front of you, take it out of your pocket and put it in front of you and it's stationary, it's not uh, going to register movement. You get uh, what I'm saying? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, but it has um, that. Uh, that's yeah, that's right. You're right. No, yeah. well, mine has a heart rate monitor on it. Well, mine has a heart rate monitor on it, too. Oh, and that's fine. But that's only for heart rate. I, I bought uh, last oh, I week see. a blood pressure uh, cuff, uh, Omeron. You, you put it on your... Uh, I know, I have oh, one yeah, of I have Omeron. And uh, the thing's great. You just push the button, and uh, and my blood pressure's been under control. I, I bought mine, no. I bought mine right. like 10 years ago. When did you just discover there's such a thing as blood pressure? Uh, well, how, how long I, have you I, owned one, Jeff? I never, I never checked. Oh, it for it, years. You know, you go to the doctor; they check your blood pressure, and uh, so I just decided to get my own. And it interacts with the cell phone, with the Apple uh, iPhone. Okay. So you know, you can keep all your readings on it, and then send the readings off to your doctor. Oh, that's oh. very nice. Uh, that, that mine doesn't have that feature. Mine just oh, has. Yours is ten years old. They had no cell phones. That's right. Thank God. <laughs> 
Yes, um, uh, Charlene. I just like maybe I lost, you know, I missed something. Did Phil get all his blockages unblocked? No, <laughs> no. He's still waiting for the second one. Yeah, and, and this one, this blocked? one's, this one's the big one. You're not eating steaks, Phil, are you? No, I'm done. Uh, Wait, that's it. You're done with steak. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm done eating. You know, ice cream and 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 all the crap that I've been eating. I uh, I figure that this is an opportunity to uh, and a yeah, second a chance. Hey, but when they clear all that stuff out, you can fill it up again. Well, <laughs> you know those people who get their stomach stapled and they lose a hundred pounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they continue to eat the way they used to eat and they gain back 125. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same thing with heart disease. Uh, you know, I'm lucky. I didn't have a heart attack. I didn't have a stroke. I found out what was going on before there was an episode. And right, right. so I'm getting it taken care of, but these things will be temporary if I don't change my evil ways. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you started the evil you join the gym show? Uh, I belong to a gym, but I am on really restricted uh, effort. I, I'm not supposed to lift more than five pounds. Oh, yeah, I'm just, because I, I'm just thinking about guys who go out swap. and they they they, they have uh, uh, cirrhosis of the liver, so uh, they get a new liver. They think of all the new drinking they can do then. <laughs> Let's yeah. start up again. <laughs> well, didn't Mickey Mantle get a new liver and then he drank himself back into yeah. oblivion? Yes, exactly. He yeah. yeah. He never thought he was going to live a little life. I read his biography because his whole family died young. Mm. Well, he I made sure he did too. I had a friend who was only 36. Well, Ray said something. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I need to raise my hand. I had a French, uh, really good friend. She was only 32 and she was an alcoholic and she got cirrhosis of the liver. Yeah. And they wouldn't give her one because she was an alcoholic and she died. Uh, mm. Yeah, it was horrible. You get a fatty because liver too. Yeah, it be, gets fatty. If you don't stop drinking, unless you got good contacts, they won't give you a liver. They're going to give it to somebody who's not going to ruin it. Well, I know, I know my liver is the one thing I could probably will to science and it, it be in perfect shape because I, you know. Oh, you don't drink. I, I don't drink. I never drink. But, you know, there are other things that, uh, uh, you know, can happen to us physically that take uh, its toll on the, on the liver. I think there's some stuff with diabetes and some other things that causes... Well, there's some uh, caustic substances damage. that you can either inhale or whatever that will affect well, no, you. Well, not, not just those. Just, like diabetes you know. can ruin your liver because of the amount of insulin or that it does or doesn't pump doesn't, through it. Yeah, right, I, yeah. I, don't yeah. have, I don't have diabetes at all. Not even close. And, and cool. never have had it. No, you're lucky. Yeah. yeah. That, is what causes everything to fall downhill. Yeah, my yeah. brother-in-law, Alex, has got to do insulin shots, and he's really thin. Well, you had to do we insulin, just... right, uh, Phil? Yeah, uh, I don't do insulin, but uh, I have diabetes. Mm -hmm. yeah, if I lose this weight and uh, start eating right, uh, I could probably control it with uh, food. Now, I've been watching my sugar. Uh, tonight, it was 114. Now, of course, I'm taking uh, uh, some pills to yeah. control the diabetes, yeah. but I was very happy with 114, believe me. Phil, you're type 2, right? Yeah. yeah oh, that's, that's diabetes. No, that's actually, diabetes. I'm Jewish. <laughs> Are we going back under Highway 101 again? Or is yes, that... yeah. yeah. There's the highway yeah. there. Oh, wow, let me see that. And then, oh, now no, we're entering the twilight nice. zone. Look at that. No, no muggers on the other side of the bridge, right? He's not. There's a young, there's a girl with a bicycle. Is that where they filmed Grease or something? <laughs> this is where they filmed, I don't know, some kind of B horror it's movie. Not, it's nice there. Let me see here. Yeah. There we are. We're it's in a the. Bicycles. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 And, and then this is there's a there's a like a river right here. I don't know if you can see it. No, and, and when it, when it floods, there. there are huge carp in there. Like couple feet long. Really? Right over this fence. Is it cold there tonight? And people fish. Hmm? Is uh, it cold? These guys No, no. It's like 70, 74, 72 <laughs> degrees. I like One time ones. I came around this corner right here and there was a stork. Oh, and it, the stork was huge. It was this blue stork and it, I scared it and it maybe flew it away. Its wings, a blue heron. Uh, maybe it was a blue heron, yeah. It was huge. Wow. And then one time, uh, I um, 
a mountain lion walked down this creek from the mountain. Oh my god! And there were <laughs> signs all over, mountain lion seen. Uh, wow. You know, be careful and stuff. But I guess it went home. Yeah. Now, how long? It's like a ten-mile walk. This walk. Wow. You've been doing this walk since uh, at least the beginning of the talk, mm -hmm. about an hour and fifteen minutes. He said, yeah. Uh, how, he how, said ten miles. It, I've got no, no, no. It's ten miles for the mountain lion to come oh. down here. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I've gone like a little over three miles, uh, yeah. in an hour and like an hour and five minutes. And the dog yeah, must was, the, the dog must love every minute of it. Oh yeah. You know, well, my it, dog. If you walk her too long, she makes you pick her up and carry her. <laughs> <laughs> she won't well, move. <laughs> she won't move. She she refuses. If you drag her, you, you, you know you'd have to drag her to move her. Uh, so you got to pick her up, cradle her, and carry her, and then. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Kevin Kevin wrote and said, "Egrets hang in there." Yeah. Well, Alex. Yeah. Did I happen to be at the dentist today, and the view came on? And I was like, I was afraid I'd get thrown out because I started getting like into it and stuff. And then when I went home later on, did you hear that Whoopi Goldberg had a big fight backstage with Janine Pirro over politics and stuff? Oh, Janine Pirro yeah. is a cunt. Yeah, she's very well, that's that's judge lady, right? She's they a cunt. They were screaming at each other. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I was, I, like I was thinking I was going to get in trouble because who's the Spanish lady on there? I said she's not Judge Sotomayor. Who is she or something? And I was like. Oh God! Watch, they're gonna call the police. Sotomayor, I thought thought was uh, uh, Spanish or. or she was, Spanish. Piero was Piero was furious that she didn't know that woman was gonna substitute for Joy Behar, and she sat. They sat her next to her, so there was a big thing backstage, and Whoopi Goldberg had a big fight with her, and I don't know. It was, it was Piero's crazy. a terrible. They, they had a fight on stage too. I think Whoopi Goldberg's an idiot too. Why? Well, her position, she's uh, very one-sided. Well, of course, uh, she has a political opinion, Phil. Is that that is? Yeah. What, it's not one-sided. Well, you, know, you can have an opinion, but you don't have to be a moron about it. No, she's not a <laughs> moron about it. She's very. I told you not to be stupid. She's very moron, articulate about it. It's amazing how you hate people because they don't share your <laughs> politics. No, it's the other way around. It's the it's the liberals that hate people that don't share their politics. No. It's not the conservatives no. that are throwing shit on people's uh, windows. It's not the conservatives that are beating people up with pipes. How do you know it's it isn't? How do you know it isn't con <laughs> some conservatives who, who threw because shit? this Israeli guy was a Trump supporter. That's what this was all about. Oh, I see. Well, he got what he deserved. Yeah, yeah. That's Make that be a one lesson less, to you. One less bagel shop. Sometimes I'm shocked by Meghan McCain. Why? You know, I don't. I just happened. I don't want to watch it, but I had to have it on because it's either that or that other one. Uh, I don't know some other sh stupid show like The Chew or something that's going off. Right? I, well, I like I like watching uh, uh, on Fox. They have a show called uh, the Five Out Outnumbered. Oh, I didn't see that. And it's like five women and one guy. That's a good one. And it's a different guy every day. But it's I the same watch five women. That. And they're all sitting in uh, on, I, I think this was all Ale's idea. They're sitting in chairs where you can almost look up their dress. It, it, yeah. it, it, and it's an hour of saying, I hate getting a hard on with conservative women on my screen. <laughs> you know, you get to feel very guilty about it. Do you know the show Where I'm talking about? i got to watch this. What is it? Jeff, do you know the Outnumbered. show I'm talking about? Outnumbered. Outnumbered. No, what time does it come on? Noon here, so that must be 9 o'clock out on the West Coast. You know what the problem is when you cut the cord? I can only see these pre-recorded things on the Fox channel. I don't get to see the live uh, iteration of it. Yeah, but you, iteration. Uh, yeah. uh, actually, what happens <laughs> is a lot of those network feeds, like the ABC feed, yeah. if they have the ABC app they have, you yeah. can get live programming on the ABC app. You, yes, but on Fox, you can't. Unless you have, like, Comcast or something, and you can uh, uh, put a code in. But uh, uh, what do I have? Uh, Sky? No, I don't have Sky. What, what's it called? Uh, I have some, uh, some uh, thing. I forgot what it's called. Uh, Sling? Me... Sling? TV. Sling. Yeah, I have yeah. Sling. And Sling doesn't count. So... Uh, 
you know, and I haven't called any of my friends yet to, to have them get, you know, <laughs> give me the code. <laughs> yeah, you have, yeah, I have to, like, you have to have one of the major ones yeah. to watch it. Yeah. But yeah. even if I did, I'd probably put it in, and then two weeks later, I'd have to do it again. So, you know. They do make you do it sometimes over again. I often have to re-put put it in, like, every, yeah, like, every two weeks or so I do. Yeah, so yeah. I, haven't, yeah. I haven't bothered to uh, try and pirate it, but... Uh, yeah, I can't get uh, I can't get uh, Fox uh, live programming uh, because I have Sling and I have Hulu and I have uh, a number of other things. I probably pay just as much oh. as if I had the uh, the Comcast or the uh, or the AT and T. But uh, the fact that I don't have it makes me happy. You know <laughs> that Netflix is making so much money; they double it everywhere. It's on demand. I think it's now a channel on five. You know, you, you keep duplicating everything. I have Hulu and Netflix. Yeah. And I'm paying for all that. You know, I don't need it. You know what happened today? What? Uh, I guess um, uh, Jeff Bezos's uh, Amazon is uh, past the 900 billion uh, value mark. Uh, so it and Apple are the f uh, only two companies that have had more than 900 billion dollars in. Uh, in, in value. Wow. Well, you know, I had to test Apple TV the other day, and I got paid hundred dollars. There's well, a new Apple. It was oh, it was a prototype remote for Apple TV, and they like asked me questions, and it was like I had to go up to Sirius, like a suite in near Pennsylvania, New Jersey. It wasn't very. It was so tiny. You know, and they were all looking at me like I was weird or something. But I, I, I did something dead. like that once uh, for yeah, Adobe, it Adobe was so Lightroom. Easy. I kept telling them it was hard because it was like a touch pad. I mean, it was great though. And um, Alex, you know, don't get mad at me, but Sirius, you were ahead of your time. You're already on TV. Sirius now has like TV coming or something. They uh, they told me, but I'm I don't know like. Uh, I asked them if it was on yet, and they said no or something. But they have well, Alex, you've always been ahead of your time. You always do something before, you know, 10 yeah, well, years. They, I know. They, they, like, he invented Mark, the no, podcast. But, but, uh, yeah. uh, uh, where you're wrong on that is that uh, even when I was there, Sirius had TV. Oh, they oh. did. Yeah. We just didn't know it. Or... In the executive's office, they turn them on. No, uh, no, they, they, <laughs> actually, they actually had uh, t uh a TV channel with kids pro they did basically kids programming huh. uh, because they figured uh, that number one you couldn't put a TV set in the front uh, panel of, of a car. car okay because there are laws against that in many states but you could put it in the back where the kids were watching so they offered a serious TV service for what they called the back seat channel or something and and you could uh, they they had nothing but kids shows running. I thought most of those ones that were in the back seat were VCRs or or DVD type things. Yes, but this was if you had Sirius Radio, you could subscribe to the Sirius TV oh. and have it play on those screens. So yeah. they didn't have the back door channel. Yeah, the only thing is no. that I read something <laughs> recently that. that uh, Sirius is doing pretty well, although their subscriptions are not, haven't gone up that immensely as of late. But what they're saying is, is that they're about ready to get too much competition from the fact that most cars are going to carry Wi-Fi now. Right. Oh, and, I can't wait. And once, once Wi-Fi comes along, they just have this whole world of stuff they can port into their, uh, into their audio system, uh, like this program and whatever, and that that's going to be the biggest competitor to Sirius because already by being satellite tel radio, it's outmoded. It's, right, it needs a special receiver. It, well, yeah, but it's outmoded, and if you can just you know plug in your uh, your uh, you can get four G four G on your phone on in your car, um, yeah. you you can listen to this show or you can watch uh, a TV do, stuff. Do you want to feel bad? Uh, on the uh, Amazon thing, they also said today that if you bought one share of Amazon stock when it was offered, the first offering, it was $18 a share mm -hmm. and, uh, in 1997. That same share today is worth $22,000. Wow. 
So uh, what what they said, and and the Amazon uh, stock went up fifty seven percent this year. Really? Yeah. So wow. and it's, it's at a thousand eight or something a, a share right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my yeah. my, my serious stock went up something like what's the crickets? Uh, oh yeah, that's right here. That's here. Yeah, is it can too hear loud? The, we, no, we get to hear the crickets. That was fine. That was nice. Yeah. No, but what happened is, is that uh, uh, let's see, my serious stock went up something like I don't know twenty percent this year. Well, you know, it went from like you know six dollars to seven dollars, but that's, you know, that that's was, pretty good. You can thank Trump for that. Oh yeah, sure. He has everything to do with the stock market jumping. You know. He yeah. he made a big deal hey, out know, of it going he made a big deal the other day out of it going over 25,000 and the fact was it had been gr a lot higher and then went below 25,000. Yeah, but it was 18,000 so when he took over. Huh? But what was it 18,000? No, it wasn't that it wasn't that low. No. 20? And it was a, you know, you ha a lot of that rise you have to attribute to to uh, to Obama. You know, it, it, it wasn't the day that uh, Trump became president. All of a sudden, everybody wanted to buy stock. You know, no, no. But the uh, I think there was confidence in the market that it was uh, Trump uh, who was supposedly pro business. Yeah, that I think, I think Phil's right about that. I remember as soon as he got elected. My stock went up quite a bit. <laughs> and, it, it's, uh, and it still doesn't mean shit to a tree, to be honest with you. The economy yeah. of the country doesn't depend upon this uh, Wall okay. Street gambling so, system. You know? So give back the money that you made this no, year. I'm not from saying, the no, increase. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it, it's not, it, it, what you're not getting is that it, it, it does not necessarily talk about the welfare of the country. It just talks about stockholders. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean that people are getting jobs. And then when we say the jobs rate is up, but you're not saying what people are getting. Actually, people are getting well, paid less today than they were of, getting paid years ago. Your, a lot of your union pension funds rely on the stock market to be able to pay out those pensions like you get from uh, uh, SAG. Uh, you know, if it wasn't if it wasn't for that. And the and the upswing in the market. My, your pe my, my pension. I'm sorry, my pension doesn't go up and down based on the stock market. Well, they they can't afford to pay unless they're making money on their investments. They can afford to pay because they have the money already in the bank from years of of that money being deposited into my account. Yeah, no, they they can t they no, use that no, money no, to no, 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 to no, uh, invest. No, no, no. no. Well, I put money yeah, you, in. You, you I put. Think, I, think I put you money. Back with I your put own money. Yes, absolutely, and the money of my employers, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that money went in just like insurance companies. They they take that money and they invest it. Do you know that for sure current. with AFTRA? I know it's it's the way uh, all unions work. When I get uh, my SAG statement, what, 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 when what? I get my uh, when I get my equity statement with for my pension, it tells me what I'm going to get like years and years from now. Yeah. It tells me like how much I'm gonna get a month once they start giving it to me, which is like 15 years from now or something. No. It's not, I mean, I didn't work yeah. that much under AFTRA, but I gotta tell you, I get about $900 a month in pension. So yeah. why does all of these public unions have so, so many problems because the investments that they made uh, some of them, especially in 2008 to 2010. Well, we can get into that. Days. We can get into that on another day. I mean, if right. you want to talk about the postal service, that's because they were forced to pay 75 years in advance. Is where that. Well, they went postal. Was. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> hey Jeff, you've been a little quiet tonight, but uh, I, know. I always enjoy. He's tired. I always enjoy having your face there. So when are you going to Europe? Um. I think in about a month. About a month. Okay. And how yeah. long are you going for? Probably a week. A week. Oh. Okay. Uh, hey, listen, thank you for joining us tonight. Same thing with Ray Renati for taking mm -hmm. us on his nightly walk. It's now evening in California. Uh, Tony, thank you for being there, as well as Phil and, of course, Charlene. And I all that's your cat, right? Yeah, and, uh, I can't wait because I got screwed up. And, and uh, also, I want to thank uh, I want to thank SG for joining SG. us as well. Right. Uh, uh, very nice to have him join us. 
uh, uh, you know something? I think it would be nice about this time if everybody uh, did a big wave goodbye. Okay? There they go, folks. That's the Citizens Panel. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow night. It's a Friday. Uh, it's our Friday free for all. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you name it, people will come, right? Anyway, listen. Now let me just get rid of... Uh, I have to close everything down here, otherwise the show after me, which is uh, with Jack Bishop and his wonderful program, The Intersection, which is a delightful folly if, uh, foray into the wonderful world of citizen panels. Uh, and then at uh, 1 o'clock this morning, we've got uh, Connections. And then tomorrow night at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time, it'll be the dulcet tones of Damian Chaplin followed at 10 o'clock by me same time same station in life in the meantime as always if you see her tell her i love her okay bye everybody <laughs>